Hello everyone, this is Ravinder Dundra and welcome to my channel. In this video lecture, we will continue the next part of class 9th geography, chapter number 2 that is physical features of India. In the previous lectures, we have discussed about two, uh, two or three important physical features that is Northern Plains, Himalayas as well as Peninsular Plateau. Now, we will continue the next topic that is the Indian Desert or we also call it as the Great Indian Desert. So, what are the specialties of this Great Indian Desert, where it is located and what are the climatic conditions of this Indian Desert. So, let us discuss about this Indian Desert. So, this Indian Desert, it is mainly located towards the western margins of this Aravalli Hills. For example, if you look into the map, here you see Aravalli Range or Aravalli Hills. On the western margins means in the map, you can locate this Indian Desert in this region that means western margins of this Aravalli Hills or there is one more name for this desert that is we also call this desert as this Thar Desert and the next very important thing is that it is completely covered with this sand dunes usually everyone thinks that uh, almost all deserts in the world they'll have uh, they'll be covered with this sand dunes but it is not true some of the deserts they may not be covered with this sand but here the great Indian desert that, that is Thar Desert, it is completely covered with this different different sand dunes. Sand dunes means what? You see, sometimes the sand looks like in this shape uh, in the desert areas. So, everywhere in this Thar Desert, you can find this type of sand dunes. Then, the next one is that the rainfall is very very low. How much it is that? It is just 150 millimeters per year. That means it is not even in the centimeters. Why? Because here the temperatures are very high. The cloud formation is very high because uh, sorry cloud formation is very low because of this there is a less rainfall therefore it receives just 150 millimeters per year then because of this less uh, uh, rainfall what climate it experiences is arid climate what do you mean by this arid climate arid climate means you can say it is a dry climate and if there is a dry climate automatically there will be a low vegetation cover low vegetation means you can see very rare number of plants and trees in this uh, desert area that is for example if you take this uh, uh, Indian desert if you visit uh, uh, Indian desert you can find that less and less number of trees and plants in this region the region is uh, the reason is that because it is having arid climate or a dry climate why because it receives less rainfall in this uh, in this area then the other very important feature is that the only river which is flowing in this region is this Luni river of course there are some other small streams of water bodies like canals like uh, can be flow uh, can be flowing during this rainy season but once the rainy season gets over automatically this will be uh, stopped so those rivers will be stopped uh, flowing so the only river very important river in this region is this uh, Luni river then the other very important feature of this Thar Desert is that here you can find this Barchans that means almost most of the area is covered with this Barchans. What do you mean by this Barchans? Barchans means uh, something like a crescent shaped moon like uh, sand dunes that means you see a crescent shaped crescent shaped means you see like this kind of shape you can find the moon so in this in this shape you can also find this sand dunes in this particular region in Thar Desert. So, this Barchans are also one of the very special feature of this Thar Desert or we can also call it as the Great Indian Desert. Next, uh, we will discuss about this Coastal Plains. Let us discuss about the other very important physical feature of our country that is about this Coastal Plains. So, we have already discussed about this Northern Plains. Then, what are these Coastal Plains where they are located? These Coastal Plains, they are located as we have already discussed about this western margins of peninsular plateau as well as eastern margins of peninsular plateau that is this uh, western guards as well as this uh, we have also discussed about this eastern guards and you all know that here in this side you can see arabian sea and on this side you can see this bay of bengal so where we can find this Coastal, uh, coastal plains is that on the western side we can find the coastal plains between western guards as well as this Arabian Sea. So in between these you can see a narrow stretch of coast uh, plain areas. These we call it as this western coastal plains 
then the same time in between this eastern ghats as well as bay of bengal you can find a narrow stretch of coastal plains which are located on the eastern side we can also call them as this eastern coastal plains so eastern coastal plains means which are located between eastern ghats as well as bay of bengal and western coastal plains means which are located on in between western ghats as well as this arabian sea so a narrow stretch of plain area we call it we call this as this coastal plains then how this coastal plains they are again further divided again as i told into western coastal plains as well as eastern coastal plains again in that this western coastal plains it consists mainly three regions or three sections one is this northern part region which is covering this uh, mumbai as well as goa region we call it as this konkan plains or we can also call it as this konkan coast so here you see northern part we call it as this konkan plains or konkan coast which is covering mumbai as well as this goa regions then below this that means the central part that means below this region you can see we have one more region this one we call it as this kannad plains which is covering mainly this region state called this karnataka then below this the southern part of this western ghat uh, western coastal plains which is covering the state of this kerala we call it as this malabar coast so this western coastal plains it has it is having three main sections one is mumbai goa region we call it as this konkan plains konkan coast and karnataka region we call it as kannada plains kannad plains as well as kerala region we call it as this malabar coast then what about this eastern coastal plains this eastern coastal plains it has having two different sections one is the north one as well as southern one the northern part this particular region we call it as this northern sarkar and this part below this part this southern region we call it as this koramandal coast so this eastern coastal plains they are divided subdivided into two different parts or two different sections northern sarkar as well as this koramandal coast so with this we have completed this uh, what is that coastal plains and one more very important feature of this coastal plains is that this lake chilika which is one of the important feature of this eastern coastal plains which is located in the state of this odisha and it is also the largest salt water lake in this country so with this we have completed about this the coastal plains next we will discuss the last very important topic of this chapter that is the islands so next we will discuss about this islands let us discuss about the last very important physical feature of our country that is the coast uh, the islands so our indian uh, india we have different different islands but mainly we have divided into two important uh, two groups of islands one is this lakshadweep islands which are located on the southwestern margin of india near this malabar coast that means just beside this kerala in the arabian sea then we have also another group of islands that is andaman as well as andaman and nicobar islands which are located in this bay of <coughs> bengal so this lakshadweep they are located in this arabian sea so first we will discuss about this lakshadweep islands which are located on the southwestern part of our country near to kerala or near to malabar coast so what are its what is the specialty of this lakshadweep island so this lakshadweep islands it is mainly composed of something known as small coral islands it is not a single island you see here a small different different groups of islands are found can be found here and almost all these islands there you can call them as this coral islands what do you mean by this coral islands means corals are something like skeletons of small sea animals known as this polyps so these islands are mainly covered with this skeletons of this sea animals known as polyps so that is why these islands they are also known as this coral islands then they were all, but till 1973 this lakshadweep it is known with different different names people used to call by saying that the something as lakkadweep minikoy as well as amindeep but after 1973 the name has been changed to lakshadweep islands and the area covered by this lakshadweep islands is a very very small area just it covers this 
32 square kilometers and the other very important feature is that this uh, the capital city or the headquarters of this Lakshadi islands are mainly done at a place known as this this Karavati or you can also say the capital city of this Lakshadi islands is Karavati and this island they are also very rich in flora as well as fauna which means they are very rich in this uh, plantations or vegetation that means plants as well as also variety of animals can also be found in this Lakshadi islands then one of the island known as Pitti island where it has a bird sanctuary and in this island no human beings are there only they have constructed this bird sanctuary so with this we have discussed about this Lakshadi islands next we will see about this Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Let's discuss about the other very important island group in our country that is this Andaman and Nicobar Islands which are located in this Bay of Bengal. When, it, when we compare to this Lakshadweep Islands, this Andaman and Nicobar Islands, they are bigger in size, numerous that means more in number as well as you can also see they are more scattered. But whereas this Lakshadweep Islands, they are very close to each other that means different different group of islands <laughs> of course they are there but they are very close to each other but when it compared to with Andaman and Nicobar islands they are scattered everywhere and the next one is that again this Andaman and Nicobar islands are further divided into two categories one is the northern part this means the northern zone we call it as this Andaman and the southern zone is with that means this southern part we call it as this Nicobar islands and this Andaman and Nicobar islands they are also same as like luxury islands they also have a, a great uh, what is that rich they are also very rich in flora as well as fauna that means they have a huge diversity of plants as well as animals then this Andaman and Nicobar Islands, if you take this equator something, they are somewhat very close to this equator. What are those? This Nicobar Islands especially. So that is why this Andaman and Nicobar Islands, they somewhat experience this equatorial climate. That means whatever the climatic conditions that are present in this equatorial region near to the equator, the same kind of uh, climatic conditions are also found in this Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Why? Because they are somewhat very close to this equator so this is about this the different group of uh, islands in our country mainly Lakshadweep as well as Andaman and Nicobar Islands. so with this we have completed all these six physical features of our country we have discussed about Himalayas Peninsula Plateau Northern Plains Coastal Plains Desert as well as islands so now what is the specialty of each and every physical feature of our country how they are helping our country how physically that means how they are contributing to our country so let us start with this what is that Himalayas so this Himalayas they are the main source of water as well as forest and wildlife if you can see most of the rivers the main rivers such as Ganga Brahmaputra as well as Indus these are uh, these rivers they actually originate or start from this Himalayas at, at the same time these Himalayas are also source for this what is that uh, forest as well as wildlife so therefore what we can say is that these Himalayas they are the main source of water as well as this forest then the next one below this island uh, below this Himalayas you can find this northern plains which are also what is that we can known as this granaries of the world why because these northern plains as I told they have what is that the plain area and it is completely covered with this alluvial soil which is very good for this cultivation so these northern plains are known as this granaries of the world then below that if you can take this peninsular plateau usually all the plateau regions there are rich sources of these minerals in the same time in india also this uh, plateau is also very rich in mineral resources then the next one is this island groups which are islands as well as this coastal plains which are ideal source for this fishing as well as this boating or you can also take this uh, what is that tourism purpose so like this each and every physical feature it has its own unique specialties at the same time they are also contributing to our country's growth economic growth so therefore we can say that all these physical features are there contributing our country in this development path so with this we have completed this chapter known as this physical features of our uh, physical features of india next we will discuss about the next chapter from geography that is drainage thank you